Are Harbor Freight tools any good? As you can see, I have a number of different tools here laid out on the bench. These are tools that I've picked up over the last five years, and I thought it'd be pretty cool just to go over on how well they performed. Are they durable? Are they worth the price? Should you waste your time with them? Maybe see something here they're looking to purchase, so in a sense, this could be a review for you. So right off the bat, I'm going to start with something that's underneath the bench. Now starting underneath the bench here, we have an electric wench. Now this is something I purchased a year and a half ago. I do have an installation video if you're curious on showing how you can uh, anchor this right onto a concrete garage floor. And in my case, I've used it half a dozen, maybe eight times to pull up uh, a vehicle. In my case, I have an inclined driveway. So it's worked perfectly, perfectly fine. I would say it's, it's really more for light usage. If you're using this thing every day, I wouldn't recommend it. I would recommend a higher uh, unit or better unit, but it does have a four and a half star rating on harborfreight.com. And again, for light usage, I think it's perfectly, perfectly fine. Now this happens to be a one ton engine crane. What I would say about this is if you're looking to purchase an engine crane from Harbor Freight, get the two ton. And the reason behind that is the boom is incredibly short on the one ton. In this case, we used it to remove an engine off a 240Z, but I was barely able to get that engine out. I had to remove the oil pump, in fact, just to clear the front of that vehicle. So it did work, but one ton really is just too, is too short to boom. You want the two ton. So this has a 4.0 rating on Harbor Freight, and that's one reason that uh, people give it a low rating is because the boom is too short, but also the second thing is it's a folding crane meaning the legs fold up, okay? So as you can see, the legs fold up so it fits in the corner quite nicely. Then you have a pin that goes here. This fits in here. There we go. So as you can see, and both legs fold up completely. Now, with this, the problem is when I lower this back down, ooh, as you can see, the line, the holes don't line up very very well so what I have to do typically is I have to lift the bottom of this I think that's what I did Let me see. take the weight off the leg and then ew. there we go so now the pin is in as you can see I mean if you have a bad back forget it you'll kill your back just doing this so that's the downside, again, against this shop crane. But that being said, for incredibly light use, I've used this really once. I think it's perfectly fine. That's just the big drawback, obviously. Regarding the, the, uh, the engine holder here, or the engine stand, this is not Harbor Freight. In this case, it happens to be JEGS, just because I read, whew, I'm out of breath here, just because the, uh, the reviews I read online at Harbor Freight, they weren't that good on the engine stand. So if you need an engine stand, very, very good quality. I really like this one a lot. Now let's take a look at these hand tools on the bench. Now very quickly, also in connection to that engine crane, this is a load leveler. The whole point behind this is when you pull an engine, it's on an angle. And what you need to do is level that engine out if you want to place it on the ground or if you want to bolt it onto an engine stand like we have. So that's the whole point of this. When you pull the engine, you turn this handle and then the engine slowly levels out. So this has a 1500 pound capacity. It's rated 4.3 stars on Harbor Freight. In this case, again, I did use it on a 240Z. So that's a 2.4 liter uh, with the transmission still attached. So it's not an incredibly heavy unit, but it did struggle. I would not recommend this if you're doing a small block or a big block, a Chevy, Ford, whatever the case may be, a Mopar. You can take a look at the welds. They're not they're poor at best. They're not very, very strong welds, and the threads here are really low quality. So for using it once, it worked perfectly, perfectly fine, but I think when it comes time to reinstalling this engine, I'm going to just use a different leveler, just because it just didn't seem that stable, didn't seem that smooth. Uh, there are some levelers that you can uh, attach a drill to the end and just use an impact or a cordless drill just to level out the engine but uh, that being said now going over here this is probably the first thing I purchased from Harbor Freight back in 2011 this is a breaker bar I highly recommend this this is has been just absolutely wonderful I have used this so many times regarding removing lug nuts removing struts removing uh, crankshaft pulley bolts 
And typically what I'll do is, I'll, uh, this is a one by 24 piece of pipe I purchased from the hardware store. Let's see if I can do this here with one hand. So I place the pipe over the end of the breaker bar and now I have an incredibly long handle to really any bolt loose. I don't use any power tools. Everything I do here is hand tools. I mean, it's been awesome. I think it has a 4.9 rating on harborfreight.com for like 11 bucks. Cannot go wrong with, the, with this breaker bar. Terrific. These also I purchased maybe five years ago. These are really nice when it comes time to pulling and removing hoses. So heater hoses, cooling hoses. As you can see, the whole point behind the shape is that it won't rip the hose. And again, I've used these a number of times. I think the PCV video that we have, we use these hoses. When I disassembled the 240Z engine, I used them. Really good quality in terms of, if you're not using it, uh, overly excessive. These are Pittsburgh again. Again, Pittsburgh tend to have really good ratings on Harbor Freight. And then moving over to this set, this is Pittsburgh again, 64 piece socket and ratchet set. I highly recommend this. I have not broken or stripped one socket. In fact, the first, one of the very first videos we have is a strut removal video. And 90% of those tools came from this set because I actually was uh, doing that job somewhere else. And I just threw this in the trunk of my car and I was able to really uh, do the entire job with this set. So highly recommended, very, very strong. It does come with a half inch drive as well. Uh, I broke that recently, completely a fault by fault of my own. Very quickly what happened was I was removing a bolt and the end of the ratchet got stuck against a chassis part and it was too late. By the time I realized it, I couldn't get a tool in here to, to change this to tighten up that bolt so I can remove this. And it was just too late. By the time I did get this off, it was broken because it was just too much stress on the end here. So it's a cheaper, obviously this, this ratchet mechanism is nowhere near as good as this, but this ratchet from Craftsman probably costs as much as this entire set. So I think if you, want, if you want an extra set just to throw in your trunk, to keep in the backyard, to have a second location, whatever the case may be, really good stuff, highly recommended. And I like hard cases. This has a nice hard case. Worked very well over the last five years. Then moving down here, this is probably my favorite tool from Harbor Freight. These are ratcheting wrenches. These you can pick up forever they were out of stock and I was able to pick them up. Uh, I've had these since, let me see, since March 2014, so a little over four years. These are absolutely awesome. As you can see, just a ratcheting wrench, really good quality. These have a rating of 4.6 on their website and I've had zero issues with these. And if you're curious about the sizes, they do come in 8, 10, 12, 13, 14, 15, and 17 millimeter. I've, now I have not used the open end section of the wrench. I just use it primarily for the ratcheting ends. But if you need a ratcheting combo wrench, really, really good stuff. Then moving over here, we have a number of different deep wall half inch drive sockets. Now in this case, it's the black sockets that you see here. They give you a number of different sizes. Uh, they, I believe it runs $25 and I've had these for around four, four and a half years now. Zero issues. A lot of times I'll use these sockets with that breaker bar. I've had absolutely no issues whatsoever. In terms of the downsides, it's, it's a little hard to read the, uh, the exact socket that you're looking for. On some other sets, they, you know, for example, the, if you're looking for an 18 millimeter, it will be in red. So you can really see it very quickly. So, you know, but again, it's a cheaper end, but if you're a shade tree mechanic, you're just doing stuff in your garage for your own car, perfectly, perfectly good set, and it's inexpensive. Moving back over here, this is a disc uh, compression set. Now, the whole point behind this is if on some vehicles, when you replace the brakes, for example, we have a video on uh, rear brakes on a Maxima, the calipers, you can't squeeze them in with a normal pair of C-clamps. You have to squeeze in the piston of the caliper and have it turned at the same time. And that's what this does. This slowly turns that caliper piston and squeezes uh, the caliper piston at the same time. Really good set. Uh, very good rating on Harbor Freight. I used it maybe two times in the last four or five years. I still have it as you can see. But uh, comes with a nice case. Really good stuff if you have a vehicle like that. Highly recommended. And then moving down here, we have a three jaw puller set. Now this is something you can rent from your local auto parts store. Now in my case, I typically work on my vehicles. It could be 9, 10, 11 o'clock at night. 
If I need something, I need it then. I can't stop and wait till the morning. I just have to get the job done then and now. So this is something I picked up for, I think, around 25 bucks. Not incredibly tough, as you can see. It does have some markings on it. I've used it only once to pull a rotor. Did the job perfectly fine. But also, if you're looking to pull, let's say, an alternator pulley or a power steering pump pulley, whatever the case may be. Again, you can rent them, but this is something, there's some things I just like to have if I need it. And that's just the way I am. Then moving over to this, this is a tap and die set. This is, for example, you're bolting something on your vehicle and the bolt snaps. And now you need to drill out that old stem and make brand new threads. That's what this set does. And this has a good rating on Harbor Freight. I've used this maybe two dozen times. Many of you are familiar with that 97 Maxima that we have here in the East Coast US. It's more rust than paint. So a lot of bolts have snapped and this is the set that I use. Now a lot of people knock on this set. They think it's cheap, so on and so forth. But I think if you use it the right way and you're not overly excessive with it. In other words, if you're trying to, to, to drill out and tap and dye new sets, you know, a hundred times a day. This is, the, you know, as a, as a professional, this is not the set for you. But again, for someone at home, this does a perfectly, perfectly good job. I've not stripped out one anything here, as you can see. It starts to degrade a little bit the threads, but still holding up perfectly, perfectly fine. And don't forget to get yourself some cutting oil when you make those new threads. Now, if you have a Dremel, this is a really, really nice set. I stopped buying Dremel attachments. In other words, Dremel. Uh, from the manufacturer, I stopped buying their attachments and I've had this set for a number of years. Really good stuff. I tend to run through these cutting discs very quickly and they were really pricey. I think this whole set is like 20 bucks or something. And it does just all the job you're looking to do for cutting, for sanding, whatever the case may be. Really good set. If you have a Dremel, I cannot really praise this anymore. Really, really nice set to have around the house. And then moving, lastly, moving over to this, this is a bolt puller set. Now this again is something that I purchased just in case. And we used this when uh, we removed, I believe it was the flywheel off the 240Z. I was showing different techniques on how to remove it and this is the adapter that I used to remove that flywheel. I think the thing with Harbor Freight is light usage for the most part. There are some things, for example, I think these are really tough. These are good, the breaker bar is really good, that brake set is good, but would I use this every single day? No way, it just wouldn't last. Would I use this every day? These bolts are not, these are probably grade six bolts. I don't think they're even grade eight. Uh, this is a good set, but that being said, you know, that you get what you pay for. So these are not Craftsman, Matco, Snap-on tools. So I hope this gives you a pretty good idea what you can expect from these tools. Obviously, if you're a professional, you're not using these tools. That's the bottom line. But for someone at home, you're looking to just maintain your vehicle, do a brake job, change the oil, change the front end bushings, things like that. These are perfectly fine. Most of them are Pittsburgh, and basically they have very good ratings on Harbor Freight. That's the bottom line. And as this video continues on here on YouTube, if you're curious on how they still continue to hold up, feel free to leave a message and we'll respond to it. Two things I would not recommend is Harbor Freight's flathead and Phillips size screwdriver set. I did have that as a second set a number of years ago and the ends are plastic and when you hit the ends with a hammer, they essentially just break off. So don't waste your money on that. Second thing is they do have a transfer pump and I use that to attempt to remove gasoline out of a lawnmower and it was really uh, low quality. Don't waste your money on that. But that being said, I think for what you see here, it does a perfectly fine job. So thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.